we're doing a lot of damage. That's what movies are all about. Destruction, right? Okay. Yeah, that's nice. All right, so we're thrown out of the window. And of course, everyone knows that when you're thrown out of a window, you have to pretend that you're flying. What kind of acceleration do you think is it gonna take to get you ejected out of a window? I knew that I was gonna take physics for my natural science requirement. I was actually very afraid of taking a science course. My student advisor said that I should take this movie physics class. This semester, it's gonna change. Last semester, we had four Bruce Willis movies, three of which involved a nuclear bomb. Science is about discovery. That is, when you do an experiment, you don't know what the answer is gonna be. How do you get across to students that experience, which is what science is all about? So the movies are a good way to do that because you don't know whether the movies actually obey the laws of physics or not. Independence Day has ridiculous physics. For energy, we watched um, Armageddon and we spent a long time talking about how much energy needed to be in that bomb. We've got 11,000 people at NASA trying to figure that out right now. The abyss, we were talking about pressure. How many pascals it takes to break a bone. X-Men 2. Supposing Magneto can control magnetism, electricity, and stuff like that, how much force would he have to use? How much energy would he create? The professor trusted you was smart enough to discover this on your own. He gives you more credit than I do. I don't really care which physics topics we cover. But that's not the goal. What I want them to understand is how a scientific analysis works, how quantitative analysis works, to be able to do some of those themselves. Even I can't screw this up. How do we figure out the acceleration? Since the movies are our laboratories, one of the skills that we have to develop is being able to watch the movie and extract quantitative information. For example, in Speed 2, you can see the ship crashing into the dock and people getting ejected through the windows and being shaken up. Well, is that really the result that you would get? There's a beautiful shot where you see the ship has decelerated and come to rest and it hits the land and then it moves so that the back of the ship just ends up at the edge of the water. So you know the distance traveled is exactly one ship length. And then you can see how fast it was moving at the beginning and you can easily estimate the acceleration. And we know that the acceleration has to be v squared over d. 0.1 meter per second squared. 0.1 meter per second squared. Anybody getting ejected out of that windshield? That's a gentle breeze. No one would be spilling their drinks. You're really starting to make us look bad. Does Hollywood need a lesson in physics? Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, that doesn't mean that I think they get all their physics right, but it's a question of why should they? It's nice looking at it with a scientific perspective because I'm not a science person, and it's stuff that I wouldn't have otherwise realized. Science is messy, and the students shouldn't get the idea that it's this nice, canned, developed thing. Many students have come to me and said that this was a, a revelation to them, that they didn't think that science was like this. It's that experience of not knowing what the answer is and then doing the experiment and seeing what the answer is that we really want to get across to the students. And the movies are a perfect way to do that.